Is it cancer or is it health anxiety? All right, today I'm gonna to talk to you about health anxiety. First, let's go through some symptoms of health anxiety. Now keep in mind with these symptoms that once you get treatment for your health anxiety, and you can either read that book, you can watch my videos, there's a few different things you can do in order to treat health anxiety, that a lot of people report these symptoms disappearing. So let me go through some of the common symptoms for health anxiety sufferers. Anxiety attacks, being overwhelmed, blurry vision, body aches, can't sit still, chills, crazy thoughts, constipation, compulsive behavior, diarrhea, emotions of all kinds, exhaustion, fear of being overwhelmed, fear of being afraid, fear of being sick, fear of being in pain, fear of dying, fear of losing control, feeling sick, feeling that something is wrong but you're not sure what, frequent urination, headaches including migraines, IBS, insomnia, memory loss, muscle tension, and this includes everywhere from head, neck, jaw, back, arms, legs, nausea, nightmares, numbness in the hands, panic attack, racing heart, ringing in the ears, tingles, pins, and needles, anywhere and everywhere, throat tightness, tremors, jerks, shakes, and twitching, trouble sleeping, shortness of breath, stressful thoughts, sweating, weird taste in the mouth, weird thoughts, worrying that you're going to have an allergic reaction to something. So some people who suffer from health anxiety are terrified to go to the doctor. But let's say you went to the doctor, he ran all these tests, he doesn't find anything wrong with you, and you feel relief initially, but then you get home and you're completely panicked again, a little while later or maybe even a couple days later, that there's something wrong with you, that you feel there's something wrong, that there's these symptoms that no one's noticed. So if this sounds like you, then you have health anxiety. So yes, you do have something wrong with you, it's called health anxiety. The most common things that health anxiety sufferers are afraid they have are ALS, cancer, or Parkinson's. So what do you do about it? Well, one of the things you can do about it is you can talk to a therapist, you can talk to a counselor, you can talk to your doctor and get a prescription. Another option is you can read this book. It's one page a day, that's all it is, and it gives you helpful information that will really target your health anxiety, explain to you what's going on, explain to you what to do. But here in this video, I'm gonna give you a few tips. The first one is to understand that people with health anxiety are searching for a 100% guarantee. Unfortunately, that does not exist. So you're going to the doctor, or you're calling your mom, or you're Googling your symptoms, hoping to receive some type of level of comfort that there's nothing wrong with you. The problem is, is that even if you do find that, it's short-lived because you're gonna continue searching for a 100% guarantee. There's no such thing as a 100% guarantee in anything. No doctor can give you that. No, nothing on Google can give you a 100% guarantee. Besides, when you go on Google, usually you're searching outdated information or worse, the worst case scenarios that people have had. And that does not help someone with health anxiety. So what are you supposed to do? One of the things you're supposed to do is get used to being unsure. So tell yourself, Hey, there's no 100% guarantee. I'm gonna be okay with that. There's no 100% guarantee, I'm okay with that. Another thing to consider is that you're afraid of death or you're afraid of being afraid in the future. So you're not really afraid of the future per se, you're afraid of being afraid in the future. So everything you do is trying to stem that. Every compulsion, every ritual, every self, usually the self-talk rituals you go through, that's not gonna happen to you. You looked it up, you know that. Such and such had it and they had this wrong with them first and on and on and on. That's still a reassurance. You're still searching for reassurance. So you need to keep that in mind anytime you do self-talk and you enter down that self-talk pathway. So not having a 100% guarantee is just part of being an adult. Yes, adulting is not fun. I get it, there's some good things to it, but there's also some not good things to it. I have four different things that may help you when it comes to getting your anxiety levels down. Can you say please like and subscribe? Be right to arrive. And hit the bell for notifications. Hit the bell you know what that day then. First of all, is half a tablet or a tablet of magnesium glycinate because magnesium is known as a mood stabilizer and I never found any side effects to it. The second thing is that if you're over 35, you may have low progesterone. If this anxiety is new to you, you may have low progesterone. Amazon has an all natural progesterone cream that I do not get money from by telling you about this. And it does help and it will help. When I need it, I no longer need it because of my diet changes, but if I ever do, I don't hesitate to use Source Naturals progesterone cream. It's all natural, it's not HRT or hormone, or hormone replacement therapy. So you may wanna look into that. Another thing you can use is St. John's Wort. I've used that in the past and it definitely, definitely helps. It takes weeks to build up in your system, but it is very cheap. 
Sorry, I saw a spider, I had to kill it. So you can get about 150 pills for like 20 bucks and it does take at least three weeks or more to build up in your system, but when it does, any negative thought or worry that comes into your head, it immediately disperses. It's quite phenomenal and I found no side effects. The third thing you can try is the most researched supplement in the world and it's found at truehope.com. It's a collection of vitamins and minerals. So go ahead and take a look at that. I've seen that work on people who suffer from depression and boy, the symptoms just within a couple days, I mean, it's like a veil lifts off them, they described it as. So I personally, people who suffer from anxiety generally don't like to take pills, and I didn't. So I would recommend getting on a good diet. The third thing is to recommend, is to understand your anxiety monster. All day long, your anxiety monster is giving you commands. Google this, check that, double check that. Did it change, did it not change? It's sending you images and thoughts that are very upsetting. It wants you to do certain things like wash your hands again, don't eat that, avoid this place, go to this place, do that ritual again. It's sending you commands all day long. So it's you and this opponent. And every time that you do what it says, it gets a point. And every time you do the opposite or you don't do it, you get a point. So you can do the opposite or not do it, but wait, how do you not do something? All right, so not doing compulsions, normally pretty difficult. So a compulsion comes into your head, maybe it's a contamination fear, and it's like, hey, I better wash my hands because I shouldn't eat that because that can make me sick. Well, instead of saying, no, I'm not gonna do that, good for you if you can, or doing the opposite and just eating it right there and then, basically to tell your anxiety monster to screw off, what you can do is you can do the I'll do it later. So you can think about them later. You can engage in that even if it's five minutes later, like if it's for a compulsion for washing your hands, you know, I'm not gonna do it right now, I'll do it later. Even if it's five minutes later, you're changing, you're changing the grooves and the paths in your brain to make new ones. So you can get over this, you can get better, and you can watch my videos and hopefully they will help you as well.